Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. There's nothing to do, nothing to say, nothing to talk about, nothing to think about. Basically, I'm going to do a relaxation exercise. This is kind of like a meditation-y kind of thing, where you get in touch with how you feel, but you can, I'm going to say out loud how I'm feeling. It's only a very short exercise, or I don't know, yeah, the word exercise doesn't always sound nice, does it? It sounds like you're going to have to do something you don't want to do. It's very basically getting in touch with how you feel, but not physically, emotionally. Okay, so we're not really going to focus on our bodies as such, although how we feel emotionally does affect how we feel physically. Sometimes, maybe, all the time, maybe, depends. So, we're going to get in touch with how you feel emotionally right now. And there's something about actually addressing it, about actually just noticing how you feel. Not really judging it, not commenting on it, not uh, you know having a go at yourself for it. You know, like, I sh- I'm feeling this way, but I should feel differently. Or, you know, that kind of stuff. No, none of that crap that may go on inside our heads. None of that kind of just put-downs, really, isn't it? Sometimes it can feel a bit like a put-down. Why would we do it to ourselves? Well, it's much more fun to do it to other people. I'm joking. But why could we do it to ourselves? I mean, you think about it. When someone, someone puts you down, and I, we've all been put down, had a put down by someone, um, said something about a haircut, or uh, it, could be, <laughs> it could be absolutely anything. I mean, I remember years ago at school, I had these new shoes that my mum bought me, and I liked them because they made me about two inches taller but uh, when I got to school I got everyone started calling me beetle crusher because these they could hear me from a mile off walking like (laughs) like Frankenstein's boots honestly and there was nothing wrong with my feet or anything it was just I'll be honest I chose them you know, I wanted to be taller, and it's not really relevant to this recording, but I just needed to tell someone about it. <laughs> so, it could be a put down the first time I wore glasses and went to school. This was in like the last year of school, literally just at, like a month or so before I left school. People were laughing at me because they'd never seen me with glasses before. And I got a little bit. Yeah, it, it, something. Sometimes it's a repetition that gets annoying. So if someone someone says something, even if it's funny the first time, like you know, um, I can't think of anything particularly. But oh, there was yeah, it's a security guard. Now, I when I was a security guard on a building site back in 1997, there was this big bloke, and he worked on the building site, and they were doing the uh, what was it, the, the opera house didn't, uh, in Covent Garden, they were building a new opera house. And he kept calling me, what did he call? Oh yeah, uh, 
Mr. P.D. File. He, he found it funny calling me P.D. File. And it, giggled, it, it just tickled his anus completely. He just couldn't stop doing it. The thing is, when he first said it, yeah, yeah, yeah very funny, yeah. P.D., P.D., yeah, P.D. File. <laughs> Although it's not a nice thing to call someone, but he seemed to find it funny, and I thought, okay, well, I'll just let it go. Kept doing it, kept saying it. In the end, I had to go at him. And I said, just shut, shut up. I don't want to hear you say that to me again. And he, sh- he shut up after that. And shortly afterwards, I was moved from that site to somewhere else. So uh, they probably complained about me. But... I'm wondering how off, how much do we notice it when we do it to ourselves? Because if we got annoyed with ourselves, if we were constantly putting ourselves down and saying, oh, you're no good at that, I'm no good at this, uh, I'm never going to be any good at this, uh, I don't deserve to be happy, I don't deserve to be in a relationship, or I'm never, I'm always going to be stressed, I'm never going to be able to relax. And to have that crappiness, those... Those words being said to ourself, because it almost feels like it's someone else saying it sometimes, doesn't it? And instead of doing what we would do in real life, which would be the best case scenario would probably be to avoid the person if someone was saying it, but at some point just to say, shut your mouth or stop it. Don't want to hear it no more. Or put them down, you know, find a way to make them look ridiculous, which is quite easy in most situations. But why don't we do that to ourselves? Maybe you do. But I seem to find that for some reason, and I do, and it's, it doesn't make sense really, that I seem to accept that negativity. I'm trying not to. I'm, I'm working on it. I think <laughs> work in progress is the uh, the term. I think, but why wouldn't it be useful to be able to say, "Oi, that's enough of that crap." Well, I'm too fat to, for someone to like me. I'm I'm never gonna. Some of the stuff that I probably say to myself, possibly. And I don't deserve to be successful. I don't, no one, no one likes what I do. No one likes these recordings. That's the sort of stuff that I say in my head. But it's not me. It doesn't feel like it's me saying it. Yeah, because I've got this stuff going on that contradicts what's being said in my head, it it almost forces me to address it. Because I've got this, this thing in my head saying, no one likes what I do, um, what do I know about hypnosis, what do I know about helping people, all that, you know, very negative. And then I'll get a comment posted saying, you helped me, so much you you know you've helped me to reduce my my anxiety. I used to have panic attacks. Now I'm okay. I help you help me sleep. You know things like that. And plus you know four thousand view uh, view four thousand to five thousand um, downloads a day from around the world. So I get a little bit of positive feedback, and it may it I kind of causes me to think okay. Wait a minute, why am I thinking that? And But there's other things that just keep carrying on. And I've not even confronted it. And I've been thinking, why not? Why don't perhaps... I'm just assuming other people may have a similar thing going on. Where, what, why don't we confront it? What's stopping us from confronting that rubbish chat in our head? 
when we wouldn't put up with it from another person. It's almost like we're bullying ourselves. I don't put up with bullies, never have. I've had a few people try and I've dealt with them in whatever way I was able to. I had it with a job once and I ended up just left the job because there was nothing else I could do. So I left the job. So it's... But I don't put up with bullies. I won't. Yeah, I put up with my own bully that's walking around inside my head. I don't know if it's walking around. It's probably just sitting there smoking drugs or something, but some of the stuff it comes up with. But it's a bully. It's picking on me. And I wouldn't put up with that in reality. You know, I might have to walk away from the situation. I'm not saying that I'd go full on, head on, you know, punch up situation, you know, because that's not always, that's not really applicable, is it, In um, as an adult? But so why do I put up with it in my own head? And that's why I'm thinking, no. No, it's, it's not acceptable. So that, that's kind of the exercise, is get in touch with what thoughts you're having. Get in touch with what thoughts you're having that are negative. Now, if you flip it on its side, we get more of what we think about. So if we think, if we focus on our positive thoughts, we get more positive thoughts. You're opening yourself up to more positivity. You're focusing on it in a very uh, vague but similar way of saying, when you say to a child in the back of the car, you say to your kids, you know, maybe you want to stop them from arguing. Okay, all um, see how many red cars you can spot. It can be any colour. And suddenly, they're seeing red cars everywhere. Yellow cars, it could be yellow cars. They're seeing yellow cars. But before that, they weren't noticing them. Unless, of course, you're at some kind of a red car convention, then, of course, you're going to see lots of red cars. But I don't know if one exists. So what we focus on, we get more of. So that's where I'm mentioning this just for the simple fact that I'm asking you to notice the negative thinking. So although we're noticing it, we're not focusing on it, we're not searching for it, we're just noticing it, and it's a different situation to focusing on positive stuff. Because when we focus on positive stuff, it's because we want more of that. You know, it's just, it's, I suppose in a way it's as simple as if you're looking through the freezer department in the supermarket and there's a specific ice cream that you like. You know, let's say it's haagen Jerry, Benny, Jenny, Relly, whatever it's called. And Big Fat Belly, which would be me, my special favourite. And there's a specific flavour that you like. Um, No, whatever it is. Cookie dough, um, coffee, whatever. If you, and you're looking through the freezer department for the one that you like. And you're noticing the things you like. So even though you're seeing the ones you don't particularly like, although I don't see many tubs of ice cream where I think, no, I don't like that ice cream because I like probably most, apart from peanut butter. But you're noticing what you're searching for. And you're kind of looking for it. So, okay, that's not... It's a different attitude in your mind to... Is if you was going to go and say... Say you worked in the store and your supervisor said, 
go into the shop, go into the, the that section of the shop, um, and go through the freezer and take out all the the Hagen Dazs because they're all off. They're out of date, but they are spread out amongst. They've been mixed up, so you'll be looking, f- but in a different mindset. You'll be looking for stuff, and you won't be thinking mm, yum yum yum. You'll be like, ugh, it's out of date. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. chucking them out. But when you're looking for something, yeah, let's say your supervisor says, "Oh, you got we've got a special offer. You can have a free tub of ice cream." You know, all the staff can have a free tub of ice cream, a Hagen Dazs or Jerry and Benny Belly. So it's like, okay, you go and looking like, oh, it's a different mindset. It's like, hmm. So when you're looking for the the negative, which would be the out of date stuff, that would be to just get rid of it. But when you're looking at the good stuff, they're like, oh, I, mean, I personally would probably think. I like that one, I like that one, I like that one. But there's also three other staff members going to be coming towards the freezer in a minute as soon as they manage to untie themselves because I would have tied them up so they couldn't get to the fridge and freezer before me. And I was like, oh, so I'd pick the one I wanted. But it'd be positive. Well, obviously, I'd get arrested, wouldn't I, I suppose, if I tied them up, but forgetting that, it's not real. So I'd be going in and get. Oh, I'm going to choose the. Yeah, that's the one I want, and I'll have that one. A different frame of mind. So the reason I'm mentioning it in this, and I'm using the ice cream as an al- analogy, and has made me want to have some ice cream now. So it probably wasn't a good idea, but I think it's important. To have a different mindset when we focus on positive stuff, to how we feel when we focus on negative stuff, we need to remember that there's a line. There's a there's a different feeling. There's a different energy. There's a different mindset around those two very different emotions. I hope that makes sense. I mean, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure how much it made sense to me, but the overall idea makes sense to me. So, by noticing that crappy stuff that we say to ourselves, I'm going to use the word crappy because that's probably the nicest word I can say about like all-out swearing because it is horrible. It's disgusting that we would talk to ourselves in that way. It is disgusting, not disgusting in a way of like, how dare you do that to yourself, and not in a blame way, because this is not about blame or guilt, and nothing I ever do or say will be about blame or guilt. So please don't get me wrong with that one. That's this is not. It's the opposite. It's the complete opposite to that. But to talk to yourself and to have that voice is horrible. It's someone bullying you, and it might not even be your voice. It might be something that you learn years ago, even though it's wrong. But you learnt it, and there was nothing to block that stuff going into your mind. And like we all do, as very young children. And as adults, we absorb stuff. That, that's what hypnosis is. It's absorbing stuff, which is why I do my best to be to talk about positive things. And and I hope I kind of tick that box. It's about absorbing the positive ideas. And when it's nice, when it has a nice feeling connected to it, it's gentle 
and it's kind and it's said in a nice way and a, a genuine way then it's more likely just to slip into your mind without any kind of well, wait a minute what are you doing What's, what are you saying to me because you can hear what I'm saying to you because you know, and you can play back any recording that I do so that's one of the benefits of this kind of stuff, recordings, because nothing's really hidden, you know? You've not come to see me in an office and then gone away thinking, I only remember perhaps, you know, 25% of what he said. What else did he say? Well, if ever you feel that in a recording, you can just listen back you know I'm not I don't sort of go 10 minutes in and start doing a little dance and start talking about ice cream well clearly I do talk about ice cream but gentleness the point about gentleness when something's gentle it slips into your mind that has, it spreads, you know, it's like seeds and it grows because your mind is fertile ground. There's nothing more fertile than your mind. That's a brilliant thing. And it's also, there's a negative aspect to that is if you have seeds let's say poisonous seeds you know like poisonous mushrooms have you know they've all got the the roots to those that start growing you know so you've got seeds that can be poisonous grown to something poisonous that stuff will also grow because you've got a really really fertile mind it's the it's more fertile than any ground on earth Anything can grow in your mind. Any, anything. Which means we need to be careful what we allow in there. We need to be a little bit more careful. And not only is your mind completely fertile, it's so fertile. Also, Unlike with a, uh, you know, I've never worked on a farm, but I've seen a few documentaries. And, you know, it's, it, if they want to remove the whole crop from a farm, it's a lot of work. But in your mind, it's easy. All you've got to do is just decide that that thought is now gone to unroot that thought that negative thought about yourself may be, uh, for me, let's say I think, I'm trying to think of something. Let's say I look in a mirror and think, no, no one's ever going to like me. You know, I don't, I don't do, I don't, no woman's going to meet me and think, ooh, I'm not sure if that's ever going to happen, but I'm not that anyone would make that noise. But how is that thought helping me? Now, admittedly, if I was walking around with a dead seagull on my head, it could help me to think, well, perhaps I should remove the dead seagull. Then I, I might have more opportunity of meeting people and them even approaching me. But I don't walk around with a dead seagull on my head, so that's not really valid. So what I can do in my mind, I can think, oh, where is that? Where is that? Because it's poison, isn't it? Ultimately, the thing that bull bullies us is poison. Bullies are poisonous. That's, that's what it is. It's poison. So if I'm like, okay, where is it? In fact, it doesn't matter where it is. I'm just going to remove it. And it's removed. Click of the fingers, just let you know that's what it is. I just did there. Although I could move my big toe and I'd probably get the same sound. 
my old my old toe joints. Forty nine years old, nearly fifty years old now. My toes. Not doing too bad though. So you can remove stuff. And you know what? If there's a particular feeling that you like in that really fertile ground, which is your mind, your unconscious mind, your mind, let's just use the word mind. You don't have to use conscious or unconscious. It's your mind. And you've got that feeling. You think, you know what? That feeling... It feels nice where you feel confident within yourself. You realize that actually you're very competent at something. You know how to do something. We all know how to do. We all know how to do something really well. Whether it's related to your work, whether it's related to a hobby. Um, but it might be simple, or I say simple, but... It's simple to most people that can walk. Walking is a simple thing. It didn't used to be. It didn't used to be when we were little children, little toddlers. Walking was one of the hardest things ever. And anybody that's gone through rehabilitation after an accident or, uh, you know, injury, learning to walk again, it's, you know, they've... it's. They'll tell you that it's, it's, it's a task to learn to do it. And it's incredibly possible to do it as well. And most people will be successful. Yet most of us would just walk around without any idea that what we're doing is pretty amazing. We're experts at that. Most of us are experts at eating, feeding ourselves, going to the toilet. And these things, you know, for a lot of people just think, well, so what are you talking about? I've been listening to you for 28 minutes and now you're talk, telling me that I'm, I'm really clever because I can wipe my own bum. No, that's not what I'm saying. I suppose it is kind of what I was saying, but it's not really about that. It's the fact that we're all really good at stuff. And that part of our brain which says that we're not is lying to us. lying to us and is that acceptable to you it's not acceptable to me it's not it's not acceptable that you're doing it or that I'm doing it we need to kind of stop and make changes for our own health you know, I'm not saying you need to do it for me because it's nothing to do with me what you do. But it's for you. For your own happiness. Start to notice. When are you bullying? When is that bullying voice coming in? When? What's it saying to you? That what limited thinking is happening? So it's noticing these thoughts, but not necessarily searching for them the way we would for positive thoughts. It's a different energy, different mindset. Because when you, when you think about positive stuff and you search for positive things, you open your mind up for more positivity. When you focus on the negative things that well, technically, if you focus on negative things, you're opening yourself up for more negativity as well. But this is a different type of focus. So what you focus on, you get more of. But this is a different type of focus because it's not so much a focus, but a noticing. It's a noticing. It's almost, you could say, you're fishing. You 
catching these negative thoughts in a fishing net. You're catching the negative thoughts in a fishing net that's always out there. So imagine you've got these nets and they're always there, ready to catch those negative thoughts. The positivity, the positivity is little. It goes right through the nets. But when you move further away, you can see that they're not really little. They're just parts of something much bigger. Huge, bigger than us, bigger than anything. Positivity in your mind can just, it can be way more than you can even comprehend. You might see the tip of the iceberg. You might see, oh, it's positive. That feels nice. But the more you focus on that positivity, which is connected to all other positive thinking and feelings, because they're all connected. The negativities, they almost want to be on their own. They think they're like special, you know, which is how they get caught in the net. Because they're like, oh, because they're bullies. They're bullies, like, oh, I can do what I want to do. I can say what I want to say. But then they get caught in the net. Because they're not very clever, to be fair. Bullies are not very clever. So because if it was clever, it wouldn't be picking on you. Because you're way, way cleverer than any negative thought. There's more to you than any of that stuff. So you've got these nets out catching these negativity things, thoughts. The thing is, once they get caught in the net, they lose that energy that they had. They lose it, they give up because the negativity is weak. It gives up. It thinks it, it likes to act strong, but it feeds off other people's fear. But once that fear is not there, it can't eat, it can't feed, and it dies. That negativity just dies, it literally dissolves. When all the other negative, little negative, you know, fish, if you want to call them, but negative thoughts see what's happening to that other one that's dissolving, they start to get scared. And when negativity gets scared, that's when changes really happen, like a ripple effect. And that message gets sent. to other negative thoughts that haven't even arisen in your mind yet. It's like a warning. This is not a safe place for negativity. This is not a safe place for bullying thoughts. We can't visit here anymore. Used to be a lovely place to come on holiday, but now it's rubbish. You start to feel different. 
you start to feel freer. And it, it might not even make any sense. Like, how? why would I feel different and freer when this man's talking on a podcast about ice cream and fish and fishing nets and all that? What's all that about? Yeah. I feel different. You feel different. And that's the power of your mind. That's the strength of your positive thoughts. Because you think about it, in reality, we are born positive. We are. We are born positive. If you get into, well, just look at a little baby when it wants something. When that baby, if you've got, a, you might be a, a, a parent or grandparent, and you might have a baby that's not very old, six months old maybe even. When that baby wants your mobile phone, that baby wants your mobile phone. And he or she ain't going to give up. They want your phone. A toddler that toddler wants to walk. No child yet, I think in the history of the world that I know of, has ever given up trying to walk. There's not one adult or one teenager in a wheelchair because they're lazy, because they gave up trying to walk. They're in a wheelchair because they can't walk or, you know, obviously there's a real reason for it. But no one, no one ever just gives up. No child gives up. No toddler gives up trying to walk. No toddler ever's eating and, you know, trying to feed themselves and the food keeps going off in their ear and in their eye and on their head and everywhere. They never give up. They're going to eat, even if it means scraping it up with their hands. They're going to get that food in their mouth. So we're born positive. We learn negativity. We are born positive. So it's sometimes almost like you know how you, uh, you can do with a computer or a laptop, you can set it back to or reset it to the factory settings. But when you get a laptop through, it's all working perfectly. So it's not like you're resetting it back to zero. You know, you don't suddenly like, I'm now a baby. No. But some of that negativity can just be boop, reset back to the positive side. when we actually believed that we could do things, even if we could never do them, even if it was regardless of how impossible or how ridiculous it may have been. I used to believe I could fly. I used to believe I could walk. I could become invisible. Now, I know that that stuff isn't generally real, although as I got older, I do seem to be more invisible than I used to be, but it's something that um, a boxer called Tyson Fury says, doesn't like dream, dream killers. Is it dream killers? I think that people that say you can't do something. So let's not be a dream killer of ourselves, of our own. Let's not kill our own dreams. And let's not kill other people's dreams either. I think is a good good bit of advice. Especially for your own. Because let's face it, if you don't kill your own dreams, you're not going to be killing other people's either. 
people that are negative towards other people guarantee they're negative towards themselves. In fact, it's probably going to be much worse inside their own head. It doesn't mean that people that, you know, there's a lot of people that would not be negative towards other people, but still have that negativity in their own head. Can dissolve, as I said, with the, those nets that you got cast. And the good thing about it is you haven't got to check the nets because the nets have now been cast. They're there to catch the negative thoughts. If you want to have a look at them, you can. You haven't got to search for them. Because the things worth searching for are the positive thoughts. What you focus on, you get more of. We become what we think about. You know, it's another way of saying it. I love that sentence. We become what we think about. And I know some people don't, don't get that. It's like, what's that mean? And I've met people that have actually said, what are you talking about? What's that mean? Well, it's not my sentence. It's, uh, it's uh, Napoleon, Napoleon Hill. It comes from him. You become what you think about. So if you're thinking about positive stuff, you're going to be more positive. That's the simple, simple way to explain it. And if you think of lots of negative then, you know, the opposite happens. So, if you think about how relaxed you're going to be tomorrow, what a great night's sleep you're going to have tonight, or whenever you go to sleep, how much more comfortable you will feel within your own skin, how much calmer, how much more optimistic you're going to feel towards the future. And you're going to get more of that. And you become that. And I've possibly not said anything that I haven't said before. But I do like like the idea that we are born positive. I remember my little brother, right? Well, I don't remember him, I still know him, but when he was little, he was... He had this yellow... Uh, what do they call it? Like a potty, a yellow potty. So he would have been, I don't know, two? Two years old? Would that be potty training time? I'm not sure. And he could walk. So... He was pretty positive. I remember how... I've only seen one child grow up, and that was my little brother. Like, right from birth. Well, not if I didn't see the birth. But, you know, from being a little baby, and I saw him grow up to the age of eight. And then he moved away. And I still have content. I've seen him grow up, you know, to a 41-year-old man. But... I saw the first eight years of his life and I saw him every single day during that period. And very determined, very confident, and very, very positive. And he always achieved what he set out to do when he was little, you know, whether it was getting the biscuits out of the out of the tin which wouldn't open. I mean, I'd, he didn't know I'd sort of glued it shut, but he still managed to get it open. Whether it was getting inside the car and using the keys, finding the keys and opening the car, we shouldn't really be in the car. We told him to stop driving it, but, but you know, whatever he just wanted to do. And I remember we was all having a dinner once and he was determined to potty train himself. He was so positive about the whole... Because he was getting a lot of positive reinforcement. And I'm not, sh- I'm not saying that it happens with everyone, all parents and everything. But it seems to be a time when 
or in my life anyway, but I've seen other parents and people with that positive reinforcement that's there when a child is very small. Brilliant, you're taking your first steps, you're learning to speak, say dada, mama, um, smile, oh, you're smiling, you're trying to get the baby to smile and laugh. To get to a point where we're no longer interested. So that reinforcement, positive reinforcement seems to, if not stop completely, then at least slow down. And I I understand, you know, in a sense of, you know, you're not going to be going to, going to your, your child's, during their exams, doing their GCSEs or, you know, whatever 16 year olds take, and you're not going to be going in, standing behind them, go on Bobby, you can do the next one. You can do that next question. That's it, remember? Yeah, that's it, right? Now hold the pen in your right hand. That's it. Move. That's it. Sit. Sit straight. That's really, you can do that. You know, of course, we can't do that necessarily. But when you think about it, it's having that positive reinforcement at an early age. I know that not everybody had it. And I didn't have it when I was very little. So, well, I probably had it for the first maybe year or so too. But, you know, from then on I didn't. But, I, you know, but a lot of people do. A lot of people, some people don't. And there's a natural positivity that's there. And my little brother came in, we were eating our dinner, and he came in with his little potty, yellow potty, I remember, showing us all his little poo, little pebble poo in some wee. And literally just, he put it on the table, which was disgusting. He didn't pour it on the table, it was he, he left it inside the potty. But he was so proud of himself. And... It was both disgusting and cute and really funny all at the same time. And I think it depended on how close you were sitting to where he put the potty. You know, luckily I was the other side of the table, but I imagine if you're sitting right next to him and he plonks it down, there's a bit of spillage onto your plate. That probably did it. So not that that happened, but... So... We're born positive. We're born determined. And we're born with dreams. We're born being able to fantasize wonderful things happening. So these are things that we have ingrained in us. We're always going to have them. We're always going to be able to Imagine wonderful things happening. Always going to be able to imagine positive scenarios. Always going to be able to be positive towards ourselves. It's there. It's like breathing. It's there. We're born with that ability. Sometimes it's just getting back, getting back to it, getting used to it again. I suppose it could be a little bit like someone from, I had a friend that was from Germany. And she was born in Germany, lived in Germany all her life, and then came to London in her probably early 20s. She knew English, she, she spoke English brilliantly. But she said she'd go back to Germany probably two Twice, twice a year, summer and Christmas, maybe three times a year, because it's easy to go there for the weekend. Um, but she'd go back. But she said even though she'd be away from Germany for maybe four months, when she went back, it was strange to get back into the speaking German again. Because everyone she knew was English. 
sort of in London. She, well, not everyone was English, but everyone, no one spoke German. And she said it was really strange. And then when she had her kid, she had a child, and she, I think she taught her child German. So then it kind of made it a little bit, uh, she had someone to speak German with. But before that, she was like, oh, it's really strange. Just have to get used to speaking German again. It, took, it used to take her a couple of days to get back into the swing of um, of that fluent German speaking, even though she was born with it. So I imagine someone that doesn't that move away, don't speak German to anyone for 10 years. I have no contact with German people, speakers, doesn't read a German book, doesn't nothing, doesn't watch a German television program. And then goes back to Germany to a visit or maybe meets another German person. They still can speak German. It's going to feel weird. It's going to feel a bit strange. But it's still there. And I'm, fo- I'm not focusing on Germany for any other reason other than that's my friend who's from Germany. It could be the same if you were from Italy or, you know, wherever. I had another, I had a girlfriend that was from, she was half Italian. And only her right side. <laughs> and she... Which her dad was Italian, her mum was something else. And she used to go to Italy all through her childhood for the whole summer, every summer. So she could speak Italian fluidly or fluently. But she said to me, you know, whenever she went back, every summer she'd go back and because they spoke English in the household. Generally, I think her dad would speak Italian to her. Did I say Spanish or Italian? She was from Italian. She was an Italian heritage. Uh, well, her dad was heritage. <laughs> her dad was Italian, I mean. And where are you from? I'm from heritage. And she said it took her a while to get back to it. I think that's what she said. Yeah, I think she did. I remember we was eating a meal and she was talking, but I was a bit more concerned about who's going to pay the bill. And she did, thankfully. That's a problem. You know, when you order something, it's like, yeah, it's, that looks nice. But it's all in a different um, language. I just go by the picture. So she managed to get back to it and just like someone that's lost the use of their legs temporarily or the use of a limb, they learn how to use that part of their body again. It's just in the same way muscle memory someone that hasn't done martial arts maybe for five, ten years and they go back into it and they they remember how to punch and how to kick might take a while but they start to get back into the groove it's like the groove was already there but it was a little bit overgrown but they can just maybe a bit dusty a bit filled in with dirt and they can clean it out clean out that groove and they can fit right back into it again and everything fits together perfectly So we're born positive. That's going to be the title of this recording, I think. Although I've talked about the bullying, I've talked about the negative thoughts, I'm going to call this, we were a born positive. We are all born positive. Because it's true. 
which means we all have the ability to be positive, to get in touch with that. Get in touch with that feeling. It's always available to us. And we get more of what we focus on. We become what we think about, which is not my sentence, but I love that sentence. We become what we think about. Which I think in a sense of mental ill health, I want to be more than bipolar or personality disorder. I want to be more than that. So I try maybe to think less of that stuff as far as how I see myself. I want to be more positive. I want to be a hypnotist, you know. I want to be Jason the hypnotist. That fits more with the positive side of my mind. Jason who helps people. Jason that loves his little boy, the ferret, Andre. Yeah. I'll stop saying my name now. So I wonder what you could, you could give yourself a few little labels, positive labels. So if your name's Steve or Andrew or Paula or Adele or Laura or Amy or Jen, you know, whatever your name might be, Bartholomew. Maybe a few little positive, positive labels. Jen, the kind person. Paul. It could be something like bricklayer. You might be really good at bricklaying. Or... Adrian, the shipbuilder, building maybe model ships. Or Robert, the dancer. And this isn't just one label, that's, that's all you are. Let's face it. Well, let's face it. If we're going to give ourselves labels, and we do, we do, we all do it. We all give ourselves labels. We give other people labels, probably as well, and other people try to give us labels. So, if we're going to have a label, why not choose our own labels and only choose positive ones? Because when you say, if I say Jason the hypnotist, that's not all I am. It's something that I do. It's, it is what I am, but it's not all that I am. I can't think of any other positive things, but there's, there's other things, other positive things. A podcaster, Jason the podcaster. Jason the Sleepy Man. Some people call they've called, labeled me the Sandman because I send people to sleep. I think that's based on a mythical character or something. So I'll leave with that one sentence. We were born 
positive. We were all born positive. And isn't that groovy? Don't you think? It's very groovy indeed. You try and find another hypnotist that used this word groovy in a recording, you won't find it anywhere. <laughs> it's groovy. Because you're groovy. We're all groovy. Because we all have that positivity inside us available to use at any time. That's always been there with us our whole lives because we were all born positive. So that is the end of this recording. So I did start off saying it's an exercise, but it is kind of, you know, you just sort of go along with what I was saying. And maybe... Maybe listen to this a few times to cement the idea even more in your mind. But then every recording that you listen to from me will always add something more and hopefully increase your level of positivity towards yourself, which in turn increases your physical and emotional comfort and your ability to relax deeper, to sleep better. And just to feel, to feel good. Because you deserve to be happy. So remember to be kind to yourself. Lots of love.